disaster, calamity, and its solution from the perspective of Quran and Sunnah, Salafi Manhaj. Earthquake, hurricane, tornado, landslide, floods, the avian influenza epidemic, the swine flu disease. And the latest is the tomcat, the poisonous ant which used to befriend the farmer in getting rid of the pest, but now it turns against humans. These are a myriad of results from the sins and wickednesses that we planted with our own hands. We might forget that we've ever planted that forbidden seeds, but Allah never forget, moreover sleep, even for just a glimpse. Whatever misfortune befalls you is a consequence of your own deeds. But much of it he forgives. Q.S. A.S.Y. Sayura of the Consultation, 30. Whatever difficulty afflicts you, O people, in yourselves and your wealth it is because of the sins that your hands earned. Allah overlooks many of them and does not take you to task for them. Ashura, 30. There are many verses in the Quran that confirm that sin and wickedness are the culprit that causes the long-standing disasters, which afflicted men's civilization for centuries. Imam Ibn al kaim died in 751 H, said. What caused our both of our parents, Adam and Eve, to be expelled from paradise, the land of pleasures, joys, happiness and delights, to the land full of sufferings, sorrows, and disasters? What caused that had drowned all of earth's dwellers, the people of Noah, until the flood rose above the peak of the mountains? And what caused the wind that had devastated the people of A.A.D. up until they died scattered like the rotten date palm tree? And destroyed whatever it passed in their country, their plants, their ranches, until they became a lesson for all nation until the last day? And what invited the awesome upheaval to the people of Tsamud, that torn open their hearts inside of their bodies until they perished? And what caused the country of Lot to be raised, until the angels heard the howl of their dogs, and then it was turned upside down that perished them all? Then it was continued with the rain of stone from the sky upon them? And what caused the Pharaoh and his followers to be drowned to the bottom of the sea, and their souls were moved to the infernal hell? Their bodies were perished due to the drowning, whereas their souls were burned. See, al Jawabul Kafi, 43. The answer is concluded in a single phrase, sin and wickedness. Shirk, the main cause of disaster. It is important to note that the most severe of wickedness in Allah's view is the shirk. Where someone worshipping other beside worshipping Allah. Praying to other than Allah beside praying to Him. Hoping to and fear of other than Allah, beside to Him. Retreating beside the graves of the pious men beside praying in the mosque. Giving away offerings to the seed beside slaughtering. Having faith in the Messenger of Allah, but also believing in the shaman, the zodiac, and the feng shui. These are the essence of shirk, as defined by a scholar of Shafi'iyah, Imam Nawawi as Shafi'i may Allah have mercy on him dash, died in 676 H, when he said in his book, Almanhaj Sire Shahi Muslim, 271, second printing, Dari Hiyat Turits, 1392 H. Shirk and Kufr is sometimes referred implicitly to the same meaning, that is Al-Kufru, infidelity, to Allah the Exalted. And sometimes both words are differed, hence the term shirk particularly means, worship of idols or other of the creatures, along with the recognition of, those slaves, of Allah the Exalted. Truly, the shirk is the end goal of the Satan in misleading the descendants of Adam. Committing shirk means realizing the most favored thing of Satan, and it is also a form of worship to him, that could elicit Allah's wrath. As disclosed by Ibrahim peace be upon him when he enjoined his polytheist father. 44. Father, do not serve Satan, for Satan has indeed been a persistent rebel against the Most Compassionate Lord. Father, I fear that a punishment from the Most Compassionate Lord might strike you and you may end up as one of Satan's companions? Q.S. Mary Mary, 44-45 O Father, do not worship the Satan by obeying him. The Satan is disobedient to the Merciful, as he ordered him to prostrate to Adam but he did not prostrate. O oh Father, I fear a punishment from the merciful will afflict you if you die in your disbelief, then you will be a companion to him in punishment due to your befriending him. Azar said to his son Abraham, Peace be upon him are you turning away from the idols I worship, O oh Abraham? If you do not stop criticizing my idols, I shall pelt you with stones. Leave me for a long time. Do not talk to me or be with me. Abraham, peace be upon him, said to his father, Greetings of peace to you from me. You will not face from me what you dislike. I shall seek forgiveness and guidance from my Lord for you. He is very kind to me. And I shall leave you and leave the idols you worship besides Allah, and I shall call upon my Lord alone, without associating any partner with Him.
perhaps he will not deprive me if I pray to him, otherwise I will be unsuccessful in praying to him. So when he left them and their gods they used to worship besides Allah, I replaced for him his loss of family, and so I gave him his son Isaac and I gave him his grandson Jacob. And each one of them I made a prophet. Miriam 44-49 The cause of the doom of the previous nations due to the evenly torment, is none other but their rejection of the monotheistic teachings of the apostles, and they wallow in permanent shirk. Thus, Allah's torments were certain to fall on them. The ruins of their civilization are still seen until today, to be taken as a lesson by the generations after them. Allah decreed. We raised a messenger in every community, to tell them serve Allah and shun the evil one. Thereafter Allah guided some of them while others were overtaken by error. Go about the earth, then, and observe what was the end of those who rejected the messengers, calling them liars. Q.S. And now the B, 36. We had sent to every previous nation a messenger instructing his nation to worship Allah alone, and leave the worship of others beside him such as idols. Satans etc. Some of them were guided by Allah and had faith in him, while others rejected Allah and went against his messenger so he did not guide them and they deserved misguidance. So travel through the earth to see for yourselves what the end result of the deniers was after the punishment and destruction came upon them. Anal, 36. Imam ibn Katsar ash Shafi'i may Allah have mercy on him dash, died in 774 h, interpreted how was the end of those who turned down the monotheistic and join in that verse with Allah's verse, c. Tafsir ibn Katsar, for colon 570. Allah utterly destroyed them. These unbelievers are doomed to the same end. Q.S. Muhammad, 10. Have these deniers not traveled the earth and reflected over what was the end of those who had denied before them? It was a painful end. Allah destroyed their homes above them and destroyed them as well as their children and wealth. Disbelievers in every time and place will receive similar punishment. Muhammad, 10. Study and contemplation of the verses of the Quran also concluded that the wrath of Allah that came by surprise and stamped only affects those who do wrong. Allah decreed. Say, if the chastisement of Allah were to overtake you suddenly or openly shall any except the wrongdoing people be destroyed? Q.S. Alan A.M. The Cattle, 47. Tell me, if Allah's punishment comes to you suddenly without your realizing it, or if it comes to you openly before your eyes? Then is it not so that only those who do wrong by disbelieving Allah and His messengers will be destroyed, and only those who have faith in Allah and follow His messengers will be saved? I send our messengers only to inform the people of faith and obedience of the glad tidings of everlasting delight that will never end, and to warn the people of disbelief and sin of my severe punishment. Whoever accepts the messengers and sets right his actions, they will have no fear for what awaits them in the afterlife, nor will they grieve over the pleasures of the world that they missed. 47-48 If we relate the above verse to Allah's verse in chapter Luqman, verse 13, it will be evident to us that the worst of wrongdoing is shirk. And call to mind when Luqman said to his son while exhorting him, My son, do not associate others with Allah and his divinity. Surely, associating others with Allah and his divinity is a mighty wrong. O Messenger! Remember when Luqman said to his son, encouraging him to do good and warning him from evil, O my son! Do not worship any of the creation along with Allah, indeed the worship of a deity besides Allah is a grave injustice on the self, and is a cause for permanently staying in the hellfire. Luqman, 13. When wickedness becomes a culture. Wickedness that carried openly without warning let alone rejection, is a sign that sin has become a culture of life. When this phenomenon occurred, just wait for Allah's chastisement that will spread evenly, in various forms, that will destroy a civilization indiscriminately. May Allah protect us from it. The Messenger of Allah said. Indecency is not rampant in a nation, which is practiced openly in their midst, but certainly the devastating plague and disease that never existed among the previous generation will spread. And a nation does not hold their zakat, but they will be prevented from having drops of water from the sky, if it is not for the cattle, they would not have any rain. And a nation does not commit any trickery, foul play and trading, by, reducing the measure and the weight, but they will be afflicted by a long drought and hardship of life, and the evil of the ruler. And their leaders do not arbitrate with the law than the law of Allah, but Allah will make their enemy master them, and rob some of their possessions. 
and they do not reject, not performing, the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger, but Allah will make dispute or enmity among themselves. C. Shahiyat Targib what Targib? No. 2187. Solutions from Shari'a. When the Quran and Sunnah explain to us about the causes of the torments and disasters, at the same time, we could infer a formula to repel the coming of that torments and disasters. First, repent to Allah. The first step that we must do is to return and repent to Allah. Imam ibn al Kayyim may Allah have mercy on him said, in his book Mifta Daris Sa'ada, 1 287. It is not a disaster's down but because of sin, and nor will it be raised but by repentance. See, Mausua Nadra to Naim, 118. Imam al Kurthabj, died in 671 H, said. Istighfar, seeking forgiveness, if being said by, even by, the bad guys, can reject the bad things and be able to ward off various hazards. C. Tafsir al Kurthabi, 7 399. Second, uphold the Tawheed, abandon the Shirk. By the upholding of Tawheed and the lost of Shirk in a country, it will certainly be peaceful and prosper. This is what Allah has promised in His verse. Allah has promised those of you who believe and do righteous deeds that He will surely bestow power on them in the land even as He bestowed power on those that preceded them. And that He will firmly establish their religion which He has been pleased to choose for them, and He will replace with security the state of fear that they are in. Let them serve me and associate none with me in my divinity. Whoso thereafter engages in unbelief, such indeed are the ungodly. Q.S. Inner the Light, 55. Allah has promised those of you who believe in Him and perform good deeds, that He will help them against their enemies and make them rulers on earth. Just like He made the believers before them rulers on earth and promised them that He would make the religion of Islam He preferred for them established and dominant. He also promised that He will change their circumstances of fear into peace, as long as they worshipped Him alone and did not ascribe partners to Him. Whoever shows ingratitude after all those blessings are the very ones who leave the obedience of Allah. Inner 55. Third, revive the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah and continuously seek repentance. Making the Sunnah of the Prophet as an inseparable part of life among our society is one of the most effective shield to repel the chastisement and disaster. Allah decreed. But Allah was not to chastise them while you were in their midst, nor was Allah going to chastise them while they sought His forgiveness. Q.S. Allah unfold the spoils of war, 33. But Allah would not punish your nation O Muhammad, with a punishment that destroyed them while you were living among them, for you living among them keeps them safe from this punishment. And Allah would not punish them as long as they asked Him for forgiveness for their sins. Al-Anfal, 33. In the previous verse, chapter Al-Anfal, 32. Remember when the idolaters said to Allah that if what Muhammad brought was true, then he should rain rocks down from the sky to destroy them, or bring them a painful punishment. They said this going to extremes in their denial and rejection. Al-Anfal, 32. Allah told us about the infidels of Mecca who challenged the coming of the promised chastisement, if the treatise of Muhammad was indeed a truth. But Allah didn't torment them because of the existence of the Prophet and the believers who still lived among them. Ibn al kayyim may Allah have mercy on him commented that verse with a beautiful saying of him. If the physical existence of Allah's messenger among them, the infidels of Mecca, was able to prevent the coming of chastisement to them, whereas they were his enemies. Then what if his presence within a man or a nation, is realized in the form of love and faith in him, and in the establishment of what he brought, the Sunnah? Aren't they the more prominent and worthy to be spared from the wrath? C. Elam al 1 173, studied by, Muhammad Abdisalam Ibrahim. Fourth, enjoin all that is good and forbid all that is evil. If a community wishes to be spared from Allah's wrath, then the believers inside that community should advise each other to obey Allah and his messenger. They shouldn't let free the wickedness to be happened around them. There must be a negation and attempt to change that wickedness as much as possible, surely through the ways affirmed by Sharia. If not, then this is what will happen to them. Wickedness doesn't occur among a nation, then they do not eliminate such wickedness, whereas they are able to do it, but in a short time. Allah will inflict His torment upon them evenly. The status is valid, see Missy Cattle Mashabiya, 5142. Allah also decreed. And your Lord is not such as would wrongfully destroy human habitations while their inhabitants are righteous.
Q.S. Hewitt, 117. If only there were, among the communities who were punished before you, remnants of the people of virtue and piety who prohibited those communities from disbelief and from corruption on earth through sins. But there were no such remnants among them, except for a few of them who used to prohibit corruption and whom I saved when I destroyed their people who did wrong. The wrongdoers from their people pursued the luxuries they had and were wrong in doing so. Your Lord, O Messenger, would not destroy any town if its inhabitants were acting correctly on earth. He would only destroy it if the inhabitants were causing corruption by disbelief, disobedience, and sins. HUD 116-117 Fifth, Hope and Pray to Allah As only Allah is able to inflict the punishment to his servant, he is also the only one that is capable of lifting or reject such torment. The Messenger of Allah said. Indeed prayer is beneficial to anything that has happened, in the form of misfortune, etc., and useful in anything that has not happened. Thus it is compulsory for you to pray, O the slaves of Allah. Valid, C. Shahiat Targib Wat Tarib, Number 1634. In another hadith, the Messenger of Allah explained that a prayer might reject an unwanted thing to be happened to his slaves. No one is able to resist destiny except prayer. C. Shahiat Targib Wat Tarib, 1638. Ibn al Kayyim may Allah have mercy on him, said. Prayer is among the most effective drug. It is an opposite of calamity, that may repel it, repair its bad effect, prevent its coming, lift away that calamity, or lighten it if it has been descended, in it, the prayer. Ed, is the weapon of a believer. See, Joab al 110. Therefore, all prayers and hopes that this country will be spared of Allah's wrath, should only be said to him. This is the meaning of Ali ibn Abi Thalib's saying. A servant does not hope but to his Lord only, and does not fear except his sins. See, al fatwa al-Kubra, 5 231, Ibn Taymiyyah. Author, Johan Saputra Salim, Abu Huraira Islamic Boarding School, Lombok.